why, you know, why is fracking attracting so much attention? Um, you can quibble about the figures on these slides, but there's no question that fracking has really tremendous potential in terms of its economic impact. Uh, it's, you know, makes a significant contribution to the GDP. It's, it creates the potential for hundreds of thousands of new jobs, particularly in some areas like Pennsylvania, upstate New York, where you know, there have been some real struggles in terms of the economic development of these areas. And it's you know, got potential boon for states as well, because to the extent this development happens, there will be additional state tax revenues as well. And the article that I got there is just a recap of uh, President Obama's State of the Union, where he uh, you know, cited fracking as potentially creating 600,000 new jobs. OK. But Fracking is really particularly important because it's more than that. It's more than about money. And that's why I think some of these issues are so complicated in terms of presentation. And that's something that we're going to talk about later in the day when we get to our panel with our jury consultants. And you'll see these themes running throughout our day. Um, although there were some initial uh, studies that suggested that uh, natural gas development through fracking was not uh, cleaner, than uh, coal, for example. There is this potential of natural gas as a cleaner fuel and burning fuel. And there is this potential that, that it already has, according to some people, and it will continue to reduce uh, carbon emissions and therefore have some environmental benefits. And then also, there's this whole other layer of what uh, natural gas development, uh, increased production in the United States means for national security. Because as you can see from the graph on the left, there's been a dramatic uh, reduction and uh, can projected to continue in our reliance on uh, foreign oil. And so all that's a backdrop. And, and I thought that if some of you saw, it's interesting to wrap things up just on this background with the, um, the Washington Post editorial from August by Mayor Bloomberg, which some of you may have seen, where he said, fracking is too important to foul up. And uh, like I said, as I think we'll talk about later today with our jury consultants, uh, you know, that's a message that everyone seems to agree on, right? Who could, who could disagree with that? But, you know, what does it mean? I'm always happy to see all the defendants and in-house people and corporate people here because that means that they're afraid of something. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. And even though we haven't, there, are, there hasn't been the proliferation of lawsuits yet, they certainly are coming. And... Um, we continue to evaluate cases on a daily basis and I know other firms across the country are. It was interesting that last week, before we go out and I'll finish, I'll run through the last couple slides pretty quickly. This is the uh, learned newspaper, The Village Voice. In the, uh, the title was Boomer Bust, America's Fracking Gold Rush, Portends the Greatest Environmental Disaster of a Generation. If they're right, by the time we're here next year, there'll be lots of plaintiff's lawyers because they're going to finally have gotten into this. Now, I'm sure that we're going to hear about several lawsuits that my firm has filed because to this point, we haven't had the greatest decisions in our lawsuits. And there are only about 40 uh, cases pending right now. Uh, there have been several class actions. The uh, cases have been filed in state and federal courts primarily in Pennsylvania, New York, West Virginia, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Colorado. But I think that other states are going to be weighing in very soon. The cases thus far have centered primarily on water contamination, groundwater, and uh, issues such as methane migration, the fracking fluids, as well as released natural materials causing contamination. There are also other cases involving surface um, water discharges, as well as discharges on the well pads themselves. And then there have been other claims of air emissions, caught, and then earthquakes, and other types of explosions. <clears throat> the, um, some of the claims on behalf of the plaintiffs have been that it's been faulty or defective well construction, the spills of the flowback and the fracking fluids, as you can see from up here, uh, failed contaminants, the holding ponds, improper disposal, explosions, again, air emissions, failure to disclose effects. And I think that we're going to be seeing some claims, particularly in Colorado, of um, light 
and other types of pollution such as that. Then um, the harm asserted and the relief sought is almost uh, like any other plaintiff uh, tort action. It's a loss of enjoyment of property or diminution of value, uh, personal injury, which is a little more tenuous at this point, but I think that's being put together with respect to the various types of uh, chemicals that are being used and the exposures to the various workers, as well as to the homeowners and the property owners. Psychological damage for fear of future injury, particularly cancer, increased risk of injury, medical monitoring, which I'm not sure is going to, going to be going very far, and we may hear a little more about medical monitoring later. Some of the recent Supreme Court decisions are making that less likely to be a, a uh, cause of action that will be used. And then, of course, there's equitable relief or injunctive relief and punitive damages.